Hello folks, my name is Mark. This is Why I Hate the World. How are you guys doing? So we have just been brought to the brink of World War III by Donald Trump. Make, make no mistake, this debacle is because of Donald Trump. It is his fault, right? His fault alone. He's the one that caused this. So whenever there's a crisis like this, whenever these kind of things happen, um, events have a tendency to rapidly progress extremely fast, you know, and um, I think a recap is in order here. So Iran has been on America's hit list for years, ever since uh, the 70s and the hostage crisis. Um, but the current tensions didn't really ramp up until George W. Bush named Iran as part of the axis of evil um, after the 9-11 tax along with uh, Iraq and North Korea. And there was an idea back in neocon circles back then that after we wrapped up things with Iraq, that Iran was going to be next. You know, look at the uh, project for the new American century, that kind of thing. Um, however, this never happened, right? And we ended up combating a decade-long insurgency war in Iraq and Afghanistan, which led to the Arab Spring and the formation of ISIS, the European refugee crisis, and so on. Um, so, with this backdrop of nearly 20 years of chaos in the region, Trump enters the scene. So, back in 2017, when Trump took office, he inherited the Iran deal. Um, so, if you don't know what that is, it's too long to really explain here. But the short version is that it was a deal between England, France, uh, Russia, China, Germany, and the United States, and of course, Iran, in which Iran agreed to halt development of nuclear weapons technology in exchange for the removal of sanctions. There's an entire archive of Trump's tweets where you can search and find every tweet he's ever done, <laughs> right? If you're brave enough, um, I'll put a link in the thing, but you can just, just go in there and type in a Ron deal and you'll see links to all these different tweets about, you know, how it's like, a direct threat to national security and all of this other shit, you know, stand up Republicans, right? So a lot of these tweets were done before Trump was even president, while he was still running or even thinking of running. And it seemed like he correctly summarized that the way that he could steal the nomination was to capitalize on the hatred and uh, vitriol that the Republican base had for Obama. And he seemed to make his entire agenda to be all about reversing every accomplishment that Ob Obama did during his administration. You know, Obamacare, right, regulations, things like that. And unfortunately, that also included the Iran nuclear deal. Now, here's the problem, though, right? Trump becomes president. He can't just pull out of the deal because the deal was working. You know, Iran stopped their nuclear program. It was working. You know, war was averted. All was well, <laughs> right? And all was well until Trump showed up like a blundering fucking idiot and burned the whole goddamn thing to the ground. So in October of 2017, right, Trump announces he's pulling out of the Iran deal, which is something that he already wanted to do, and we all knew he was going to do it anyway. Now he, announce, he announces he's going to pull out. But he didn't have a reason, okay? The inspectors had certified that Iran was following the guidelines of the agreement. They hadn't breached the deal. He had no reason to just suddenly pull out. He couldn't blame Iran for it. So what did he do? He said, he pulls out and he says that they broke the spirit of the deal, right? Well, what the fuck does that mean, the spirit of the deal? You know, it means nothing. It's meaningless. If they were in violation of the agreement, then the Trump people would have said that and they would have listed that out and we all would have read it and we would have said, yeah, they broke the deal. But no, they didn't break the fucking deal. So he makes this bullshit up. They broke the spirit of the deal, whatever the fuck that means, right? And then he pulls this out and he unilaterally slaps... Um, oil sanctions on Iran, which causes their currency to devalue and it forces many companies to stop doing business with them. So in the meantime, Iran still continued to abide by the original deal because, you know, the United States was not the only other country in it, all right? It was the other members of the permanent uh, UN Permanent Security Council <laughs> were also signatories to that deal. Uh, England, China, France, Russia, Germany, right? So they all scramble to keep the deal going. And Iran, even a year after the United States pulls out, Iran is still abiding by the deal. And it was only after one entire year, May of 2019, right, in which Iran stops the sale of enriched uranium and heavy water and threatens 
the enrichment of uranium beyond the agreed upon limits if sanctions were not lifted. Basically, if they didn't follow, you know, remove the sanctions, they were going to start enriching uranium again because that's what the deal said. That was the deal. That was the deal in the first place, right? Remove sanctions and we'll stop developing nuclear weapons. Well, now it's like you're not going to remove the fucking sanctions. They might as well, you know. So they were following their part of the deal, right? Now, some other shit happened, you know, um, which is related, but not directly so. You know, the U.S. Uh, tightened sanctions on Iran oil exports, and then um, some oil tankers blew up, and they blamed Iran for it. And then Iran shoots down an American drone, blah, 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 right? Tensions go up and down, whatever. And that brings us all the way to January 3rd of 2020, where the Trump suddenly decides that it would be a good idea to assassinate a top Iranian general named... Kasim Soleimani, who is the leader of the uh, Iranian Revolutionary Guards Quds Force, which is an elite force that handles Iran's overseas operations. Now, who is this guy? Kasim Soleimani, right? Because if you're an American citizen like me, there's a good idea that you have no fucking clue who this person is, because nobody here knows who this guy is, right? It's the, you know, well, you wouldn't know unless you're like a fucking policy wonk or you work for the government or something like that. And don't feel bad about that because Donald Trump didn't know who this person was either. Uh, you know, there's this interview of him on the Hugh Hewitt show where he clearly has no idea who Soleimani is or what he did. And he mistakes the uh, um, revolutionary Kutz force for the Kurds, right? And if you don't know, the Kurds is like, an, they're an ethnic group in northern Iran who helped us fight ISIS and who we promptly betrayed, or rather Trump promptly betrayed, which is bullshit. So, long story short, Soleimani was probably the second most powerful person in Iran. His position is roughly the equivalent of the uh, head of the CIA or maybe the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. And that's why his assassination was a major fucking deal, <laughs> which brought us to the brink of war. Now, why did Trump do this, right? I mean, because we can't seem to get a straight answer from the White House. I mean, the, the first justification we got was that he was killed because of, of an imminent attack on, you know, United States interests, on Americans, right? Then they changed their story, and they said that it was in retribution over past terrorist attacks um, that the Kutz Force, like, you know, supported or whatnot, and also protests at the embassy in Baghdad and the death of an American contractor. And they keep changing their story, and as of yet, they haven't provided any proof of this eminent attack at all. But, you know, let's not bullshit ourselves, folks, because we know the real reason why this ha this happened. We know the reason why Trump killed him, okay? And last month, and December 18th, um, several key officials at the Department of Defense suddenly resigned, all within seven days. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna name them all here. I'll just put a list here so that you can read it. You know, they're uh, military policy advisors and undersecretary for the defense, uh, um, secretary of defense for, of, for intelligence, stuff like that, right? But, you know, why do all of these people suddenly in the, in the space of one week all just resign? Well, they all quit. Well, what else happened on December 18th of last year? I mean, guess, right? And, and if you guessed Trump's impeachment, then you win the big prize. Just, I guess I'm just supposed to believe that, you know, Several key, very important people in the Department of Defense suddenly quit their jobs for no reason the very week Trump becomes the third president in the history of the country to ever be impeached, right? I guess that's supposed to be a fucking coincidence. Of course it fucking isn't, right? Trump did this, Trump planned this attack to kill this Iranian general as a stunt to get his name back on top in the news and distract the media from his impeachment and rally his base behind him and get his poll numbers up. Right? It's fucking obvious, right? He did it because he's like an overgrown, spoiled man-child who's never had to work for anything in his entire fucking life, and he's been allowed to continuously fail upwards, and for the first time at 73, he's finally been held accountable for something, and now he's throwing a fucking fit because he's gonna go down in history as the worst fucking president ever. <laughs> Alright? And, and see, he knows, Trump knows, that his base is basically just a bunch of dumb shit NASCAR-watching rubes. And he figured the best way to get them, you know, to stir those fucking mouth breathers up was to go kill a few Muslims, right? That's exactly what it is. I mean, fucking it worked for Bush. As of this morning, July 8th, 2020, 
Iran has launched a dozens of missiles at two American military bases in Iraq. And they calculated this so that it wouldn't cause any American casualties, at least none that have been reported as of yet. And that was a message, you know, that, that message there was, we're ready for you. The, the ball is in your court. What are you gonna do? We're ready, bring it. That was their message, all right? And I can tell you right now that we, the United States, are not ready <laughs> to have a war there. We don't have nearly as many troops as we would need to actually fight a war with, with Iran in the region right now. They're not there, right? We don't have a Secretary of the Navy, okay? If you remember Richard Spencer, that guy got fired in November. We don't actually have one. We have an acting Secretary of the Navy right now. We have no Director of National Intelligence. We have no Secretary of Homeland Security <laughs> right now. Our government is in fucking shambles right now because of Donald Trump, okay? And I think that's part of the reason why he's done the one smart fucking thing that one smart decision that he's made this entire debacle and decided not to escalate further. And he actually got up in front of the nation today and said that, okay, we're ready to fight a war, but you know, we're gonna give peace a chance and he's just gonna slap more sanctions on Iran. And it's like, cause he knows, he knows that basically he fucked up. The shit's fucking exploding in his fucking face cause he's a goddamn moron. And towards the end of last year, Protesters in Iraq were protesting Iran, protesting Iranian influence in the country, right? And they actually burned down the Iranian consulate in November of last year, right? There was a lot of like anti-Iranian sentiment in the country there. All that shit's gone. It's gone now. Now they're, now they're joining together and they're protesting the United States, right? The Iraqis just voted to remove American troops from the reason from the region. That's it, man. It's over. Like 17 fucking years of nation building in Iraq, you know, over a trillion dollars spent fighting terrorism there and all that shit. Who knows how many people are dead? All right, we don't even know how many Iraqis were killed over the last 17 years. They they stopped counting. You know, there there used to be a um official numbers from the Pentagon about the number of Iraqi civilians dead, that they, they don't they don't even know. They stopped, right? You can look up the Iraq body count, but that's just an estimate. And it's anywhere from a hundred thousand to a million. Can you imagine that? A million people. All of that wasted, gone completely. Iraq is, you know, all of that was building up for us to have Iraq as an ally in the region so that we could fight terrorism <laughs> there and also work as a check against Iran. That's over with. Right? Trump fucked all of that up. Right. And to top it all off, Iran today announces that they're for finally formally pulling out of the nuclear deal completely. They're going to start enriching uranium. They're going to start building, you know, they're going to start up their nuclear weapons program again. It's all gone. Right. Good fucking job, Trump. <laughs> Unbelievable. And you too, Republicans, you fucking assholes. Good job. So that's where we're at, folks. You know, we were brought to the brink of World War III because of a spoiled rich kid had his finger on the button. And it looks like now war has been averted, but there's no guarantee that it's going to stay that way. You know, the world is a lot less of a safer place than it was just one week ago, all because of Donald Trump. Now, please remember this, all right, when it comes to vote, right? Trump caused this fucking mess, right? We had a peace deal in place. It was working. There was no war. Tensions were starting to calm down a little bit. Trump comes in like a fucking drunken bull in a fucking china shop, smashes everything up. Now, one final thing to end this on um, before we leave here. Republicans tend to react um, to those with an aversion to blind militarism with fear and disdain. And I just want to say, don't be afraid of them, okay? Republicans don't have... A monopoly on patriotism all right if you're you know against war if you don't like war you don't like sending our troops to the Middle East to go die that doesn't make you a traitor all right that's what they did in 2003 when the Iraq war started like media figures like Phil Donahue and uh, Bill Maher lost their TV shows and then they were like recording artists like um, fucking Dixie Chicks you know they lost their contracts things like that they started to silence people 
who didn't go along with it. You know, there were millions of people protesting that war in the weeks because we knew it was coming. Weeks and weeks, it was building up. We knew it was coming. And I think at one point, 36 million people in a dozen countries protested the war. And you didn't hear about it. It wasn't on the news. There was like a media blackout on anything that was anti-war. Um, and, you know, that's probably going to happen today. But we live in a much different world now than we did in 2013. We have things like social media, right? The, the mainstream media isn't like the gatekeepers on news anymore. Right. And that's why I think, you know, we have a much better chance this time of actually stopping it from happening. Right. But, you know, that starts with don't, with just don't be afraid of the Republicans. Don't be afraid of them. Right. When the Republicans and the GOP and the and Trump supporters and shit get up there and they start posting their dumbass memes of the Avengers and all that and time to go kick ass in Iraq and all that. You know, and don't let them intimidate you, right? Because they're going to call you names. They're going to call you a traitor and a commie and all this shit, right? That's bullshit. You're not the traitor, okay? There, anybody who supports this president's repeated blunders done purely for his own self-interest, they're the fucking traitors, not you. So remember that. Remember that when the election comes around, right? When the Republicans shut down the impeachment and don't and vote to not convict in the Senate... And then November of this year, when the election comes, if we're not in a fucking war already by then, just just remember what who caused this, all right? Because <laughs> this shit wouldn't have happened if the right person were elected president. If the person who got the most amount of votes became the president, like they're like the way it's supposed to work, this wouldn't have happened. So, anyway, folks, that's all I got. Stay safe. Adios.